Hi guys, welcome back to the IT and Psychology YouTube channel. Today we are going to be starting with Psychology Standard 12th. So here we continue. This is all the introduction part. Here are the separated topics and subtopics of uh, what we are going to learn in psychology and here are some details as well here we get the index showing us the different chapters the first one being psychology a scientific discipline second one intelligence third one personality fourth cognitive processes fifth emotions sixth psychological disorders seventh first aid in mental health and eighth one positive psychology next we have here is the glossary and reference those are just some extra details now we start with the first chapter psychology a scientific discipline so here are some uh, key uh, units that we are going to learn in this chapter 1.1 being introduction 1.2 that uh, those are key features of science 1.3 history of psychology as a science 1.4 research methods in psychology and 1.4.1 being a sub unit of 1.4 experimental method 1.1.2 being survey method and then it continues to observation method case study method correlation studies and then 1.5 challenges in establishing psychology as a science 1.6 being importance of rationality so here are some learning objectives this these have been given to understand what topics we are going to learn and these describe the chapter in just five points here the first key point being to this chapter's motive is to understand the key features of science and explain it Second one being to acquire knowledge on the history of psychology as a science. Third one to know about the various research methods, their key features and apply the same knowledge in the future. Fourth one to understand and explain the major challenges in establishing psychology as a science. Fifth one to understand the term rationality and characteristics of a rational person and explain its application in our day-to-day -day life. So here we have been given with activity 1. This activity comprises of what we already know about psychology and these are the basic discussions in our day-to-day -day life as we have studied psychology in our 11th grade as well. So this activity should not be much of a work to do. So here we start with our 1.1 that is the introductory part, the introduction. We live in an age of science. Almost every sphere of our life is influenced by sciences. Since the evolution of Homo sapiens as a species, the survival instinct of humankind has led humans to explore the world around them, which gradually led to the development of various sciences that we can see around us and we study in our day-to-day -day life. Today, sciences are broadly classified into three groups. The physical sciences are given as physics, chemistry, geology, and etc. The biological sciences are given as zoology, botany, physiology, and etc. And the social sciences are psychology, sociology, economics, and etc. Some people question whether psychology really is a science or not to answer this question you first need to know the answers to two questions that are what is science and what is psychology so here we continue this chapter aims at answering these two complex questions by providing insights into the topics like key features of science history of psychology as a science and the research methodology used by various people in psychology. This also comprises of 
challenges in establishing psychology as a science and the importance of rationality. Here we continue to 1.2, the unit 1.2. This provides us with the key features of science. The word science is derived from the Latin word scientia, which means knowledge. Science is the pursuit and application of knowledge and understanding of the natural and social world following a systematic methodology based on evidences. The following are some key features of the science, sorry, of science. The first one being empirical evidence. Science is an evidence based approach to study and interpret information. Empirical evidence refers to acquiring information through direct observation or experiments. Scientific knowledge is based on verifiable evidence so that other investigators can observe or measure the same phenomena and verify its accuracy in the future. So, here we have scientific scientific knowledge के बारे में पता चलता है जहां पे हमें एक proof की जरूरत होती है हमारा hypothesis proof करने के लिए तो लोगों को proof करने के लिए हमें उसका accuracy दिखाने के लिए हमें उनको सिखाना पड़ेगा कि कौन से कौन से conditions में it is वो verifiable है उसको हम future में दूसरों को बता सकते हैं कि ये value हमें कैसे मिला और कहां से मिला Next, we continue to second, objectivity. Science objectively studies the phenomenon under consideration. Objectivity means the ability to see and accept the facts as they are and not as the investigator might wish them to be. Objectivity means that all sources of biases, prejudices, beliefs, wishes, values, preferences and etc are set aside while investigating a particular phenomenon. So objectivity shows us that an investigator should be inert as possible so that he can investigate the phenomenon and measure its accuracy. So a person should not be either on one side or the other side. He should be in the middle to show that this phenomenon can be proved and can describe its accuracy. यहाँ पे एक investigator को एक side पे नहीं रहना होता. उसे दोनों point दोनों जगहों की बातें देखके दोनों point of views देखके एक inert answer देना पड़ता है. Next we continue to three scientific casualty. Science aims at finding out the cause effect relationship between variables under consideration. In a scientific study, a researcher tries to control all extraneous, that is, all of the external, external variables, yeah, external variables in order to find out the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. So this actually is a very interesting concept. Please read it thoroughly to get a better understanding of this. Fourth, systematic exploration. Science adopts a certain sequential procedure for studying a particular phenomenon. So there is a perfect procedure set so that you can study each and every phenomenon that has been proved till now. Sequential procedure includes a few scientific steps like identifying the problem, formulation of hypotheses, collection of facts, analysis, fact, analysis of facts, scientific generalization and prediction. Here all of these play their own important roles. Here we systematic exploration that we study the phenomenon a procedure and in this procedure some steps play their own important role. Next we continue to the fifth one, replication. Replication means Reproducibility of scientific knowledge under the same circumstances stated anywhere and anytime. Replication assures the reliability of results and it enables in establishing a scientific theory. So replication is a very important concept. Please go thoroughly. So go through it thoroughly. And this is self-explanatory. Please read it. 
Sixth, predictability. Predictability is an important feature of science. Scientists do not merely describe the phenomena being studied, but also attempt to explain it and make predictions accordingly. So, scientific, sorry, scientists do not just describe any phenomena without it being studied. They also attempt it, they test it, they test its accuracy so that it can be given out to the public and they can check the accuracy as well so that we know that the phenomena is true and works. Next we continue to the next activity. Please go through this as well. This, these activities are important and a thorough study of these should be done. And please discuss this with your colleagues, friends, whoever those are and discuss the, the answers you get from this from your faculty of, the, uh, of your college. You will get a better uh, view of this cha uh, chapter. Next we continue to 1.3 History of Psychology as a Science. The first one being psychology begins as a branch of philosophy. The origin of psychology dates back to the ancient Greek psychology. Greeks, sorry. Psychology did not emerge directly as a science. Psychology was a branch of philosophy until the 1870s. Second, psychology emerges as, emerges as a separate discipline in Nine, sorry, 1879. Wilhelm Wundt, a German psychologist, established the world's first psychology laboratory in 1879 in Germany at University of Leipzig. This event is considered as the official start of psychology as a separate scientific discipline. Third, Emergence of Structuralism Structuralism is wi widely regarded as the first school of thought in psychology. Wilhelm Wundt and his student Edward B. Tischner advocated structuralism. Wilhelm Wundt used the method of introspection to study the conscious experiences like sensation, sensation perception and etc. Point number four, emergence of functionalism. Functionalism was advocated by William James. He is known as the father of American psychology. He emphasized on the study of human consciousness. Fifth, emergence of psychoanalysis. In contrast to the early school of thoughts, an Austrian physician named Sigmund Freud proposed a theory of psychoanalysis in 1890s. He gave importance to the study of the unconscious mind. Sixth, emergence of behaviorism. During the early 20s, sorry, 20th century, an American psychologist named John B. Watson advocated a new school of thought known as behaviorism. Behaviorism rejected both the study of conscious experiences and unconscious mind and made psychology a more scientific discipline by focusing on the study of observable behaviors. So this, this was seen as people trusted what they could observe and not about what runs in a person's mind. Next, we come to the seventh point, seventh point that is the emergence of humanistic psychology. The first half of the 20th century was dominated by psychoanalysis and behaviorism. During the second half of the 20th century, Carl Rogers, an American psychologist, advocated the new perspective known as humanistic psychology. In contrast to the study of unconsciousness advocated by the psychoanalysis and determinism advocated by behaviorism, humanistic psychology stressed upon the study of power of free will, self-determination and self-actualization. Next we have here is the eighth point, emergence of cognitivism. 
during the 1950s and 1960s psychoanalysis and behaviorism were replaced by the new perspective known as cognitivism american psychologist named ulrich nieser is generally considered as the founder of cognitivism researchers in cognitive psychology study higher cognitive processes like memory decision making problem solving intelligence language etc with the tools like mri that is the abbreviation for magnetic resonance imaging and pet scans pet is an abbreviation for position emission tomography next we continue through this activity please visit this website to collect some information about the various schools of thoughts of psychology as this will give you a better overview about the schools so please like share and subscribe this video so that other people can get the content i'm sharing with you people and get get a lot of help as this condition that we have we have been put in uh, that is the lockdown as you all know this has affected many lives so this this, this is our life now online teaching so please i hope you like this video 1.4 and the other units will be covered in the next unit till that time thank you for watching you have been a lovely audience and god bless you